What is good, everybody? How you doing? Hi, kids. I'm Q, the Costa Rican, and I'm here to bring you my DTC Season 2 draft analysis of my team, the Costa Rican Caracostas. Now, this draft league, unlike the other one I made uh, previously, this draft league um, is centered around uh, the National Dex meta on Pokemon Showdown. So that means, like, literally all 800-plus Pokemon that are available that aren't ranked in Uber tiers that are OU and lower are available to be drafted in this draft. And uh, we took quite advantage of that. Um, I don't have the picture up here, but I was actually um, the first pick overall in this draft. I got to be able to pick first, and uh, with that, I had a lot. I had a lot of. I had a lot of thinking to do. I had about two days when I, uh, before the draft started when I found out that I was going to be picking first, and uh, I was. I, I asked myself. I go, do I? Do I, do I go with like a just uh, a meta game staple with Landorus T? Do I go with do I go with some crazy fast Pokemon? Do I go like what 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 do I do? What do I do here? I had I had quite the conundrum on my hands, and uh, I thought to myself, I thought to myself, he who attacks first laughs last. And with that being said, I took my man Dragapult first overall. I got my man Dragapult in both drafts that I'm a part of. It's it's amazing. It's amazing how it happened. Uh, a little bit of um fourth wall breaking, I suppose. This draft actually started before I was even in um the uh PDL, the, the Galarian, the Gen 8, you know, Sword and Shield draft league that I'm a part of currently. This this one, the DTC, started before then. Uh, as you can see it's season two. But I the draft process itself started I think about two days. And then I went out and looked for like a Wi Fi league that I could join and I joined one. And uh, so yeah, about the first four or five picks, I think it's at the after the fifth pick, uh, is when I joined the uh gen 8 draft league as well so um it's that's i don't know just i just wanted to let you guys know but anyway dragapult <laughs> dragapult dragapult what can i say about my man dragapult he's super fast he is the staple of the motto he who attacks first laughs last and uh my man my man is just an insane insane offensive threat uh spent with his base 142 speed and his base 120 attack and 100 special attack this uh this dragapult is is going to be taking lives and i do plan on um you know taking some lives in this draft league uh with that being said move on to the second pick um in between the first and the second pick with being the first overall pick in the draft uh we had about 30 pokemon 30 really good pokemon taken uh in between our first and our second pick but the good news was the second pokemon that i wanted was not drafted by anybody that is my man he trained now he trained is insane he trained is such a good pokemon in draft league format with Base 130 special attack and 106 in both defense and special defense. Heatran is such a good Pokemon that you can just run a multitude. Multitude? Is a multitude the word I'm looking up? You can run a multitude. Multitude? <laughs> you can run a lot of sets on this man. Like the the like the possibilities of the of the sets that you can run on this man. You can be a you can be a offensive tank with max defense, max HP, max death, max HP, one of the two. You can you can run like just um, you can even run a physical uh, uh, heat train if you wanted to. I, I personally probably won't be doing that. His special attack is just too good, too good to not uh, run special moves. But like he gets access to Stealth Rock, Toxic, uh, what's it called, Lava Plume, or uh, what's his signature move? He has a signature move that I really—it's escaping me right now. But but the amount of sets you can run with this man is just is just insane. It's like I even I even ran into the other day when I was just playing on Showdown. I ran into a scarfed heat train that outsped it outsped. Uh, I can't remember what it outsped, but it outsped some. Like I was, I sw I swapped in to you know to Earthquake, my the Heatran next turn, and he freaking outsped me and o me. And I was like, wait, what? I was like, you your Scarf Heatran? What is this? He's like, yeah, bro, I'm Scarf Heatran. <laughs> but anyway, let's move on to the next one. So with with um drafting first overall, every every pick after my first pick were coming in pairs because it's a snake draft. So. In the first round, I drafted first, and then in the second round, I drafted last, and then in the third round, I drafted first. So I was taking pairs um, after the first pick. I was taking pairs the entire way uh, through the draft, and I thought, well, what pairs really well with Heatran and Dragapult, and what what could also solidify a very strong Dragon Steel Fairy Core? I took. I took my lady Togekiss, bro. Togekiss, Togekiss, Togekiss. I really wanted Togekiss in the uh, Generation 8 Draft League, but I took Rotom Heat instead just because of the... I don't know. I don't know why, honestly. I, I probably should have just taken Togekiss in that Gen 8 Draft League. Maybe because it definitely wasn't taken by then. 
Togekiss is such a good Pokemon. But anyway, Togekiss makes up for Heatran's main weakness being ground. Togekiss is a flying type, and she uh, naturally is immune to ground type attacks. As well as, um, they, they both just complement each other very well. Togekiss is weak to, you know, electric and ice type moves, and Heatran literally eats those up with its base 106 Bidef. Uh, he trans immune to the poison typing that Togekiss is weak to. Like these, these top three, my big three, I'm gonna call them, are just, just they, they, they really complement each other very well. And I was uh, extremely happy that I was able to run away with them. Uh, Togekiss is also a very bulky girl uh, with base 115 speed death and 120 special attack. She's both bulky and offensive with base 80 speed as well, which isn't a terrible speed. This Togekiss uh, with you know the right setup. Rock and weakness policy, or even just, uh, even just like, uh, what's what's the word? I, I think I ran into somebody. I ran into somebody on showed on the other day. Rocking King's Rock, with a move that can't actually, that can't normally flinch. I can't remember what it was, but I was like, they flinched me, and I would have won if they hadn't. And I'm all like, bro, are you are you seriously King's Rock with Hydro Pump? I think it was like Hydro Pump or something they used. And they're like, yeah. And I was like, that's insane, dude. Like, 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 like the sets you're gonna run in on Showdown are pretty insane because you can literally just do anything. Um. Especially in a draft league format, I I am foreseeing a, a plethora of just weird sets that are gonna like uh, catch people insa insanely off guard, and it's gonna be great. But but yeah, like I said, Dragapult, Heatran, Togekiss, very good uh, Dragon Steel Fairy Core, very good big three, and I'm extremely happy with uh, my first three picks of the draft. And then another staple of the motto of He Who Attacks First Slash Last is my main man Araquanid. Up oh, up, oh, hello. Okay, it didn't pop up. <laughs> it's my main man, Araquanid. Uh, if you guys didn't see last season of the DTC Draft League, I I picked up Araquanid off free agency. I think around week five, maybe week six. Um, and he was he was tremendous for me, man. Getting up sticky webs with Araquanid was very essential in a majority of my matchups, and it pretty much ended the game as soon as I got the webs up, and they didn't have a Defogger or a Rapid Spinner or any sort of hazard control on their team. Um, I live and die by Araquanid. <laughs> And uh, I, I just love him. He's 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 another um, very uh, good defen uh, defensively and sp uh, special defensively, as well as well as rocking a base seventy attack. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but with the water bubble ability, of the uh, with the water bubble ability, my man of Raquinid, my man of Raquinid's water type moves are a freaking nuke. His liquidation is is just insane. With with if you're running like an adamant nature with the water bubble ability. It's he's is he's just good. I really I really just can't I I really just can't say more about him. He's, he's just such a good Pokemon. Needed a water type. Wanted sticky webs. A rack when it fits the bill. I'm tremendously glad that I got him. And then with the next pick, going in tandem with a rack when it, I took my man, uh, Rotom Heat. If you guys saw the draft analysis for the PDL, you could you know that I took Rotom Heat with my second overall pick. Love Rotom Heat. Just love me so, love me some Volt Switch pivots. Uh, can you know has the has the uh ability to run. Uh, defensive, a defensive set as well as offensive sets. Rotom Heat is just really good. He complements Araquanid well, uh, being resistant to um, Araquanid's electric type weakness as well as being resistant to Araquanid's flying type weakness. And um, you know, it's just it's just a, it's an all around good Pokemon. Araquanid complements Rotom Heat with uh, like let's say we run into a a mold breaking Excadrill. You know what I'm saying? That'll that'll Oko Rotom Heat because Rotom Heat's four times weak to ground type moves, uh, being immune to most ground type moves. But you know if if the opponent has the mold breaker ability then obviously that it ignores his uh rotom heat's levitate ability but that's it's very that's very like exact or like very situational you know what i'm saying but even so iraq is just just really good there uh because you know ground types are immune to rotom heat's uh main stab which is electric uh iraq when it comes in clicks liquidation with his water bubble with his water bubble ability i can't say water bubble too fast with his water bubble ability doing massive damage uh to anyone who wants to stay in on him now, at this point in the draft is when I joined the Generation 8 Draft League, and I wanted to try and keep both drafts similar as much as I could. But with it being, with this draft being a national dex draft, uh, I thought to myself that you know, there's obviously there's obviously a lot of combos you normally aren't going to be able to see, uh, like mainly like like for instance, Dragapult Heatran that's not coming up in a regular Generation 8 battle. But with national dex, it's very possible, and I'm I'm super super hyped to get that duo off. See how we we'll see what we can do with some things. Uh, but with uh, with the next pick in the draft, um, I was thinking about t <laughs> my with my what six pick? I think it was my six pick in the draft. I really, really wanted the Ultra Beast Cartana. I had some plans. I had some plans with Cartana last season. Cartana was so clutch for me. 
Oh my god, with being with he would have been a staple of the attack first last last uh, model that I'm running this season. But uh but unfortunately he was snatched from me by uh, this man named Potion Seller. Get more into Potion Seller. I'm coming for you, man. Uh later. Uh but anyways, with the uh six pick, I ended up taking Mega Latios, which is a extremely fast Pokemon. Now Megas are in this format. Uh, because, you know, that's just uh, it's National Dex meta. We got Megas and Z-Moves, no Dynamaxing. Forgot to mention that at the beginning. But yeah, Megas and Z-Moves, no Dynamaxing. Uh, Mega Lotti, before it even Mega Evolves, is still a great Pokemon with base 130 Special Attack, 110 Speed Def, and 110 Speed. Uh, regular Latios is is living quite a bit and, uh, <laughs> and dealing damage uh, right after it lives your attacks. Uh, but then the Mega Evolves, bro, and Mega Evolves gains 160 Special Attack, maintains its 110 speed, gets a little bit of buff in its Spadef, uh, with 120, but, uh, adds, adds more defense at base 100, and even more attack with base 130 attack, which is insane. You could actually run physical moves on your Latios after Mega Evolves if you wanted to. I probably won't. I, <laughs> I'll probably be leaning more towards the uh, special side. As you can see, I, d I do have, I do tend to draft a lot of special attacking Pokemon. I think that's mainly in part with like, I guess if I were a Pokemon or if I had like superpowers or some sort of like that, my fighting style would probably not be all up in your face. It'd be more centered around, you know, like keeping my distance and attacking uh, with what I know to hit you with. You know, what I'm saying like fire blast from my hands and stuff. That's just, that's just, you know, if I had superpowers. Let's not talk about this. Uh, anyways, with the uh, with the next pick. I uh, ended up taking my man Runa Regis. Uh, Runa Regis, I needed Stealth Rocks, needed Toxic Spikes. Runa Regis fits both those bills. Uh, another strong Ghost type, really love the Ghost typing. Gives me an Electric type immunity with its uh, partly Ground typing. Uh, just an all around great Pokemon. Uh, it's got some strong defense stat with 145. Very good Spadef stat with 105. Pretty mediocre HP with 58, but like I said, he's he's a setup mon. Stealth Rocks, Toxic Spikes, can act, gets access to Will O Wisp. Uh, gives him a, a very strong attack with body press. Um, really love Runa Regis. Used him a lot in Wi-Fi battles in Sword and Shield so far, and I, I I like him. I just wanted him on my team, and yeah, he's he's a great Pokemon. Um, with our what eighth, with our eighth pick, right? With our eighth pick in the draft, I was a little devastated. I had I had four more picks left. And obviously, I wasn't going to be able to walk away with Cortana because somebody had already taken him. But I thought to myself, you know what? I still want an Ultra Beast on my team. Uh, Ultra Beasts are just really good with their Beast Boost ability. They, you know what I mean? They they get a plus one upon killing a Pokemon in their in their highest stat, in their highest base stat. So I went with my man Buzzwell. Now I've never used Buzzwell, but uh, come to find out, Buzzwell was a problem. I needed a physical attacker. Uh, uh, at this time, besides Runa Vegas and, and a little bit of Araquanid, I had no physical attacking Pokemon. I guess Megalotti had access to physical moves, like I said previously, but, uh, yeah, really didn't have any, uh, strong physical attackers, but I got my man Buzzwell here with base 107 HP. Buzzwell is pretty, is, a, is pretty strong, uh, and both the physical and defensive, uh, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. He's, he's strong physically and defensively. Base 139 attack, base 139 defense. Uh, with move with access to moves like Roost and Bulk Up, this is this is a great this is a great Ultra Beast. Like I'm actually like I was you know I was sad I didn't get Cartana, but hey, Buzzwell's pretty decent. He's another physical, you know, physical uh, Ultra Beast. Uh, not the highest speed tier. I think he's got base 79 speed. Yeah, base 79 speed. Not the highest speed tier in the world. But, uh, you know, we get sticky webs off with, you know, and we have our Buzzwell in. There's probably not a lot that wants to stay in on a Buzzwell and, you know, try and eat up attacks. Um, in conjunction with Buzzwell, I ended up taking Diancie next. Now, Diancie is a pretty strong Pokemon on the defensive front. And the sp he's got base, or she, I guess it. It's got base 150 defense and special defense. This And it's another Stealth Rock user. Um, does, does it get Rapid Spin? It actually doesn't get Rapid Spin. That's a little unfortunate. It looks like it should get Rapid Spin, but it doesn't get Rapid Spin. I'll say it one more time. Rapid Spin is not a thing you can run on this thing. But uh, it's got it's it's got a decent move pool. It's it's a Rock Fairy type. Um, you know, gives me Stealth Rocks. Gives me answers to... Uh, what did it give me answers to? What was my thinking process here? Gives me answers to um, uh, <laughs> Buzzwell's Flying type weakness. There we go. That's what I was looking for. As well as his Fire type weakness. Um, and partly a uh, psychic type weakness. Diancie is just another, uh, just a really good tank that I, I needed. And uh, yeah, I ended up taking, giving us more opportunity for our offensive threats to uh, come in after I dwindled things down with Stealth Rocks. And I'm pretty sure it gets access to Toxic and stuff like that. And uh, we got two picks left. Uh, both, though, we're going to be very low tiered Pokemon. 
And uh, I ended up taking Weezing with the, what, 10th pick? And uh, Weezing, pretty good Pokemon. It gives me another uh, Toxic Spikes user, as well as just a very uh, defensive Pokemon. Um, access to like moves like Will-O-Wisp, Pain Split. And it, it also, if I, it has a, it only has one weakness if I run the Levitate ability with being only weak to Psychic because it's immune to uh, the ground type attacks uh, with its Levitate ability. But I could also, as of Gen 8, you could also run Neutralizing Gas on a regular Weezing because not only did Galarian Weezing get it, it gave it to a regular Weezing as well. Neutralizing Gas upon switching in uh, neutralizes, as in makes other Pokemon's abilities null and void. They're not there. They don't exist. And uh, that's, that, that could be really well, as well as giving me a Toxic Spikes Absorber if I don't run the Levitate ability. Weezing is pretty good there. I do have, you know, access to Defog on multiple Pokemon, but uh, I wanted to see how, what Weezing could do for me. It was, it was a low-tier pick that, uh, you know, uh, could prove to be very... Uh, very uh essential to my to my team um with the last pick uh in the in the draft my 11th pick i was debating on what mascot i was going to get obviously couldn't get mega pidgeot uh because my man mega pidgeot i could have gotten it over mega Lottie, but i really wanted mega Lottie over mega pidgeot used mega pidgeot a lot last year it was very good very clutch uh it's hurricane not missing hurricane was just like st super fun uh, to, to mess around with but um so it was, it was a toss-up between Caracosta and Torterra. And I'm not going to lie, don't really like Caracosta all that much, even though I'm, my team is named after him. Uh, with being four times weak to grass, it's just really not a great Pokemon, as well as uh, being weak to a lot of other things. So I went with Torterra. Uh, sure, he's four times weak to, uh, 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 what, ice? You know what I mean? But, like, you know, he's got decent defense stat, decent attack stat. Uh, you run the berry that uh, makes uh, ice-type moves weak to him. He can actually, you know, revenge kill quite a few things with that. Uh, I, you know, probably won't be using Torterra every, every, uh, every, every battle, but, you know, you know, gives me another Stealth Rocks user. Can't have too many, too enough, enough of those, you know what I'm saying? Don't know, I don't think he gets access to Spikes. Does Torterra get access to Rapid Spin? Hold up, I don't know that, actually. Hold up. Hold up. Did I just find my Rapid Spinner on accident? Torterra? I gotta go to Team Builder real quick, add a Pokemon. Torterra. Rapid Spin? Hello? He does not get access to Rapid Spin. Unfortunate. But, you know, nonetheless, great Pokemon. Love Torterra. Um, he's my, actually my favorite Pokemon of all time. If you guys didn't know, uh, he's, he's, he's in, he's in, um, uh, he's up against Dragapult for that title, though. I've, uh, as of Generation 8, Dragapults might, might end up being my new favorite. But I, I, I absolutely just love Torterra's design. It's amazing. Uh, you know, Land Turtle. Got a forest on his back. Insane. And, uh, with that, that concludes my Season 2 draft analysis. That's, uh, well... And that concludes the Season 2 draft. This is a great team. Can't wait to use these guys. Uh, my phone is going off for some reason. I actually don't know where my phone is right now. But, uh, yeah, I just can't I just can't wait to get in uh, with this National Dex. Never, haven't really played a whole lot of National Dex on Pokemon Showdown. Not going to lie. But uh, as of the last week, I have been brushing up a little bit on it. And it's been pretty fun. Um, uh, before I go, the Z-Captains. Uh, in this draft league, you assign... Uh, a couple Pokemon to be your Z captains using a hundred points, uh, as we call Z points, and certain Pokemon in higher tiers cost more points to run Z moves, and lower tiers cost less points. I ended up going with um, Heatran as my main Z move user, just giving him the the even more uh, set ca set what set um, diversity capability. Play some mind games with my opponents if they know that Heatran can rock Z moves. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, see see how that uh pays off for me as well as uh diancy gave it to diancy um she has base what 100 attack and 100 special attack which are pretty good but uh get, rocking a z move on it can give me an uh a necessary nuke if i need it on certain pokemon most likely we'll be probably running like some form of like uh passive recovery like leftovers or something like that with diancy but you know giving me the opportunity giving me the option i should say to run a Z move isn't really isn't necessarily bad there, and these are interchangeable. I think we can change them uh, once per season. So if I don't like Keytran Diancy, I can swap them out for something else in the future. But uh, yeah, oh uh, that now that concludes my DTC season two draft. Uh, loving the team, really loving the team. I can't wait to see what Dragapult Heatran can do in tandem, as well as Mikeladios, bro. This is this is this is a great team. I, I love it, and uh, I actually do know my first week opponent. It was, he was he was mentioned earlier in this uh, draft analysis. It's Potion Seller. And Potion Seller, if you're watching this, you're probably not. But if Potion Seller, if you're watching this, I'm coming for you. And I plan on taking Cartana with me.
With that being said, <laughs> uh, <laughs> battles will be coming soon. I think within the next week. I think they start January 27th. Yeah, I think I think we start January 27th in this league. In the uh, other Galarian League, we uh, we start, uh, I think, in the beginning of February. So, yeah. Looking forward to our first battle with Potion Seller. Um, should be great. He has a great team as well. Don't really remember off the top of my head. I just know he has Kartana, so I hate him. Uh, he's my rival. I've, I've, I've established that. He's my rival for this league. Taking my son away from me. But uh, I'm going to get out of here. We've already been going for 20 minutes. Uh, hope to see you guys in the future battles. And I hope to see you all in the comments section. I'll, I've been Q the Costa Rican. And... Peace.